Hello and welcome to episode 9 of The Adventures of Keridwen and the title of this episode is The Freedom of the Road. The next morning Keridwen chanced upon another holy well near a small church on the Great Orm. Only this well had been neglected by humans for many years. This made it the perfect spot to take a drink if you were a goat, a sheep, a bird, or even the beautiful blue and ever so delicate damselfly that sat on a leaf of grass inches away from Keridwen. Real holy places are open to all creatures, she thought, as she admired this damselfly. For the next few days she journeyed east, well away from the busy roads. She crossed many fields, and every once in a while made her way across along a quiet country lane where the hedgerows were home to all kinds of interesting things plants, animals and insects small animals like voles, field mice and weasels that could be heard more easily than seen. Bumblebees, stag beetles and moths found plenty to eat and made their homes somewhere in the hedgerows. Birds such as dunnocks, robins, yellowhammers and blackbirds sang happy hopeful songs as they built their nests. Except that is for the tiny wren with its annoyed sounding chatter. The hedgerows were particularly colourful in the spring with bluebells that had wandered out of the woods cow parsley and wild garlic. The hedges joined in with their own blossom. The air was full of scent and activity. Keridwen got so caught up in the heady atmosphere that while she was foraging for tufts of grass among the hedgerows, her fleece became covered with strands of sticky willy, the long sticky green plant that threads its way through the undergrowth. If she could have seen herself, she would have laughed. But it was no joke later that day when a large white-coated dog that had been left off the leash by a human made an unprovoked attack. Keridwen was forced to push her way through a tiny gap in the hedge. As she made her escape, she trod on a thorn bush and felt a sharp, stabbing pain in her front left hoof. But there was little time to waste. She had to make sure she was really safe from the marauding dog. She ran. She had never run so fast in all her life. And as the day wore on, the pain in her hoof 
grew stronger and stronger. And eventually she arrived at a strangely peaceful place in a valley, not too far from the river, in the corner of the field were the remains of a church, only a few pieces of wall really, and because it was fenced in, the shrubs and plants had begun protecting what remains by covering them up. Cadwood was able to creep through a gate that had been left open by the previous visitor. And inside she found another pool of water. She was exhausted. Her hoof was throbbing and aching. But as she took her first drink since the morning, in that quiet place, her mood lifted. But then a sudden movement startled her. But this time the pain in her foot would not let her run for cover. It was a human, a teenage boy, driving a pony and trap along the lane by the river. The boy spotted Carridwen. He could see she was in pain. So he slowly got down from the trap and whispered something in the pony's ear. Then he untied the straps and the pony came towards Carridwen slowly. She took a sip from the well. Hello, said the pony. My name is Nan. Are you all right? Not really, replied Carridwen. And she told the story about being chased by the dog and injuring her hoof. Listen, said Nan. The boy over there wants to take care of you. Will you let him have a look? Nan could see the worried look on Carridwen's eyes and added, Don't be afraid. He's the kindest human I know. When a farmer wanted to get rid of me for being just a bit stubborn, Vano, that was the boy's name, asked if he could have me. The farmer agreed. And that's how I joined the travelling community. And so it was that Caridwen found herself putting her trust in a traveller boy. Her trust was well placed. Bruno made a small fire. But he took a penknife out of his pocket with its beautiful carved handle and held it over the flames of the fire to make sure it was clean and safe. Then taking Keridwen's saw hoof firmly in his hands, he used the penknife to gently prise away, not a thorn, but a sharp piece of glass. From a bottle, probably, that a careless human had thrown from a car window and smashed in the hedge. After removing the shard of glass, Vano bathed Keridwen's hoof with some of the cool water from the well. Meanwhile, Nan had found some 
comfrey in the hedgerows, which Vano wrapped around Caridwen's hoof with his handkerchief. The traveller boy could feel that Caridwen was panting, no longer with fear or pain, but because she was too hot. Her fleece had never been cut. So he fetched a pair of shears and skillfully removed Caedwin's heavy and yes, rather dirty fleece. As he did this, he spotted the scar where the eagle's talons had wounded Caridwen on the giant's mountain. He lifted his own t-shirt to reveal a scar on his back and smiled because he could see that the sheep was a survivor like him and his pony Nan. When he was rolling up the fleece, Vano found a tiny silver coloured human coin wrapped in amongst the sticky willy. He showed the coin to Caridwen. This could be your lucky coin, he said, and then placed it in his pocket for safekeeping. It was clear to Caridwen that Vano loved being a traveller. He loved animals. He loved the freedom of not having to put down roots in one place. He loved to believe, as travellers do, that the world belongs to everyone. But Vano also knew that life could be tough. It's not easy when the settled people have made up their minds that you are good for nothing. Made up their minds when they do not even know your name. Have never heard one of your stories. But they have never asked you what is your favourite thing to do or what you dream about. That night, the three companions slept side by side at the well, next to the burning embers of the fire. As the last sparks rose towards the stars, Caridwen spoke her thank you to the night sky. She could not remember feeling so safe or cared for since last she snuggled up with her mother as a little lamb. And so the poem Caridwen dreamt that night was an especially comforting one. Once again, thank you for, for listening. And if that poem has encouraged you to take hold of a pen and compose a poem about comfort, about kindness, about people surprising you with their gentleness, then I encourage you to do so. Thank you, as I say, for listening. I look forward to seeing you for the, the next episode.